Well, here we are in the middle of the month of July in a very, very odd summer for all of us. One that we've never experienced before and who knows what the future will hold. And as we have every week, trying to walk our way through this, this barren and uh, mysterious land, we fall again into step with, with Jesus and his journey. His journey through a barren and foreign land himself who is on his way he knows not exactly where and traveling with companions who are, who are anxious to support him and anxious that his movement uh, grow and be taken seriously, uh, anxious that they can themselves be a part of it. And, and in the course of this journey, he has a couple of weeks ago, you remember, sent out those disciples and they've now come back. And in the meantime, he has had some encounters with the authorities and with people who are in need of healing. And, and to both Jesus and to the disciples, it has become clear that sometimes the, the word that they are spreading is embraced. Sometimes there are people who welcome the disciples into their homes. And sometimes there are not. Sometimes they are subject to ridicule and being simply dismissed. So we can imagine that the disciples have come back to Jesus and are having this discussion with him. Hey, Jesus, why is it that, that when we go and spread this good news, some people accept us and some people do not? Or they halfway do. Or they do but not enough to change their lives. Why is it, Jesus, that this is the way it is? And Jesus responds now in this 13th chapter of Matthew with a series of parables. He will give eight parables in this chapter and we will hear them over the course of three weeks, or most of them. And they're mostly parables about growth. And Next week, there'll be an exchange with the disciples who ask him, why are you talking to us in parables? And so we'll talk about that next week. But this week, I'll tell you why I think he speaks in parables. I think he speaks in parables because he is of a kindred spirit with Emily Dickinson, the poet. And she had this wonderful, almost elusive way of expressing herself and which always stretches you to try and understand what she's after here. And she said once, you should tell the truth, but tell it slant. And I think that's what Jesus was doing. He understood that you cannot bang the truth into people's heads like you're banging a nail into a piece of wood. He had already tried that. He had tried that with the Pharisees and the scribes and they had simply rejected him and ultimately set out to destroy him. You cannot simply bang people over the head with the truth, but you can tell them the truth in such a way that it slips into their understanding, that it slips into their subconscious, into their soul, and they carry it with them. And you can't control what the end result of that will be, but it's the planting of something that they can carry with them. Very often parables are stories that are easy to carry with them, or phrases that are very easy to carry. Today, we have that really lovely parable about the scatterer of the seeds and the one who sows. And it's always been one of my favorites because, uh, as some of you know, in my itinerant days, I was for a while at um, the Church of the Messiah in Olneyville. 
And it's kind of a, some of you were there too, you know what it is, it's kind of a crammed up little space. It's not, uh, uh, in my opinion, of, of enormous architectural uh, uh, importance, except that over the back wall, issuing out onto Onlyville Square, there is the most beautiful stained glass window of a sower with a bag of seed over his shoulder sowing seed. I always thought maybe it was the most perfect stained glass window I ever knew because there it is. God casting seed over and over, day and night, onto the streets of Olneyville Square and not just onto the, those streets, but also casting it off into the church itself, into the community that calls itself by his name. And, and it, it so captures the, uh, the, the beautiful image that we hear today. The image is, of course, that, that some seeds falls on the good soil and some falls on soil that's too shallow, some falls on hard soil and takes no root all, and some falls on the, the soil that then gets covered up with thorns. It's a powerful image. The important part is at the end when some falls on the good soil, the, the yield from that good soil is a hundredfold. It's a huge yield, more than you could possibly hope for in, in your garden. It's it's enough to feed a family for a year if it falls on the good soil. The, the story is based on Palestinian forms of uh, farming in the first century. And in that century, in that place, they didn't plow the field first. They scattered the seed and then they plowed it afterwards. And only after they plowed the field did they discover that some of it was too thorny and some of it was too rocky and some of it was too hard. It's, it's that process of planting that becomes the important thing. And, and that's that's what you and I can hold on to out of this parable, among other things. Because we know that in our own selves, the seed sometimes falls on rocky soil. We know that it very often falls on thorny soil. And we know very often it falls on shallow soil. But once in a while, once in a while, it falls in the good soil. And we really can be disciples. And we really can do the good work of the kingdom. And, and that's why this parable sort of belongs to us. Because it calls us to, to look inward at ourselves and ask ourselves where the good soil is. And where, what are the thorns? And what's so rocky within our hearts, within our souls? But not only that, you can use this parable to think outward at the world that we live in right now. Why is it that the, the word of God, the word of kindness, of generosity, of gratitude, why is it that that word falls on such rocky soil so very often on these days? But not always. Not always. That word of goodness, and you can point to those cases where people in their generosity, in their commitment to justice, in, their, in the very fiber of how they lead their lives, they are planting those seeds and it is bearing fruit beyond imagination. We, we can't imagine what comes next for us. But what we can give thanks for is that this God of ours is such a profligate sower of seeds that there is always a mighty harvest. And we can give thanks that you and I
and be those sowers. And that always we can be confident that the soil will be good sometimes and that the reward, the, 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 the victory, the produce of that garden will be magnificent, will be beyond imagination. Brothers and sisters, I, I pray you will carry this parable in your heart this week. Amen.